Hi, everyone. Welcome to our webinar today. Um, we're really excited for the webinar. We're grateful to have you here. Uh, we're grateful to Pratik, who's going to present for us. Uh, without any further ado, though, let's get into it. I'd like to uh, hand it over to Pratik, who's going to be presenting. Uh, we're really grateful to have him here. And uh, without further ado, I'll pass it on to you, Pratik. Hey, thank you so much. Uh, thank you everyone for joining. I am Pratik Purushottam. Uh, so I'm a senior manager with AnglePoint and I've been working on the IBM IASP accounts uh, in AnglePoint for the last four and a half years now. It's been a great journey. And, and today I'm very delighted to uh, present you this uh, webinar about IBM licensing and how we can success in the IBM licensing using the ITAM tools. So, during this session, we'll be uh, going through some of the topics, basic topics of why IBM licensing is so difficult, like why everyone fails in maintaining their IBM estate and why usually they get audited and, and the, the big pop comes in like uh, the non-compliance and the penalties which happens for the IBM licensing. So what is that key things which causes every IBM customer a pain uh, while, while going through an audit, like why can't they be uh, peace of mind with IBM licensing? And some of the new technologies which have come in and some of the new licensing, IBM licensing, which has adapted to those new technologies, uh, which have come in with the, the new era. So we're gonna discuss that. And we'll be speaking about IASP. So this is an IBM authorized service partner program. Uh, so we'll be giving you a brief of what is this program and how this is helping 500 plus customers, IBM customers in, in the current uh, time and how it can help you uh, in, your, in your future. And what, who are we like the angle point, how angle point can help you with maintain with, uh, with having this ISP program and how, how angle point can help you solve some of the complexities with the, the IBM uh, technologies or IBM licensing. So we're going to look into it and we're going to speak a lot about these topics in the next 25 minutes. Um, so without further ado, I'll, I'll go ahead and, and first start with the basic topic of subcapacity licensing. So most of the IBM softwares, so they are basically licensed on two types of metric. One is subcapacity based and one is non-subcapacity based. The non-subcapacity based is uh, could be like the users, the terabyte metrics or the number of records, or there could be 100 different various of might metrics available. But when it comes to the subcapacity metric, this is based on the number of cores or number of the licenses which you have assigned to a particular product. Okay, now I would like to use the, the the analogy, which uh, the simple analogy to explain the subcapacity licensing so that each one of us can relate this to the licensing and, and they can uh, understand this better. So I'd like to use the PISA analogy over here. Uh, now, imagine yourself going to a, a Domino's pizza shop, right? And you have an appetite of having a one slice of pizza, but they won't sell you for one slice. They, you have to buy the entire pizza and it will it may cost you a $10 for it, just an example. So this is like full capacity, even though your appetite is only for one slice, you need to license the entire system because that's how the licensing works for the IBM, right? But the subcapacity licensing, this is a provision from IBM, an option from IBM for customers to just buy a slice of pizza instead of an entire pizza. So instead of you paying an entire $10 for it, you will be paying only $2 because that's what you need, right? So that is how you can relate the full capacity versus subcapacity. Now, taking this analogy to the server levels, we have a server where we have like one physical server where you are hosting an MQ, which is a uh, and a VAS, a middleware software on an eight core machine. So you will be licensing, you will need a license for the eight cores instead of 
it doesn't matter whether you are utilizing only two cores of that server or one core of that server right so that's where the physical capacity comes in but when it comes to sub capacity you will be licensing only the vm of it so if you have a vm there are for example in here we are showing there are two vms and two vms have two cores each one has an mq and one has an mq and vas so instead of licensing an eight core which is on a full capacity it even when we license a vm it will only show a uh, two capacity right so this is utilizing what your appetite is and licensing what your appetite is okay so that's basically the full capacity versus the sub capacity and how everyone in this world is utilizing the benefit of sub capacity by using this analogy right there are terms to use the sub capacity and ibm has given certain directions and certain norms in the licensing to have a sub capacity licensing you need tools so what these tools does so it scans your vms every 30 minutes and it scans your software resting on those vms or resting on a server once in a day or minimum once in a week so by doing this they cap they understand the, the cores which have been assigned to those vms and they'll they'll and from that point onwards we get a grant of using sub capacity licensing we will speak about the tools in the coming slide but from the sub capacity licensing we again the technology evolved and we started using the farm the like the virtual farms or we started using the physical capacity virtual capacity and we started using in a cluster level it's a similar concept so imagine you have a four physical machines or like say i'm here showing as like four pizza you have and out of those four pizza you have you want to eat one slice of each pizza so in a full capacity you should have purchased all the four pizzas at 40 dollars each but with the sub capacity licensing you can mix and match each slice of those pizza and have it at the price of one entire pizza so that's the savings and that's the sub capacity benefit for a customer okay now again the technology evolved and there have been new stuff coming into play which is the container based licensing and ibm has providing softwares which matches the containers so which is can be implemented on a container again let's answer or, or let's take like why containers is needed isn't the vms were enough for us i mean there was there was optimization we were not licensing an entire capacity on the physical box we were only measuring the two cores or the the processor what we're using for so why is the necessity for uh, containers so containers is even even the breakdown versions of the sub capacity level so if i take the same example of pizza in a slice of a pizza you are paying 2 dollars for a slice of a pizza but a one person may not like a cheese one person may like a cheese one person may not like a chicken crust so containers is basically taking removing the rest of the unwanted stuff for you and putting or paying what you only need for right so that's how we can relate a containers compared to the vms so in a container you will not have an os running on it you will not have any supporting programs or any other programs which needed to be run than os or a system or a bios on it so it is only the application which purely runs on that containers so you can assign a fractional cost for those particular servers particular containers so the license optimization has been breaking down or getting better and better when it when we have a full capacity compared to the sorry when we have a uh, compared to sub capacity compared to full cap and then containers compared to the sub capacity now to show it in a, a traditional way or to show it in a the server architecture the first column here represents the physical machine where we saw the metrics the second column is your sub capacity licensing or being virtualization coming into play vms physical machine and how you need to licensing the all the virtual cores that is the physical the vm cores of those virtual machines in this container licensing you will have ports 
or the pod is basically a group of containers where it has an application in it and then the finally the containers where you can assign a fractional course for it and the course the fractional course will be rounded up at a cluster level so further more optimization is done and this is the currently the best way of licensing or the optimized way of licensing an ibm products good now these are the sub capacity way of or sub capacity options of licensing your ibm software it sounds complex and it is not easy to monitor on an excel or it is it, it is not easy to monitor using just an inventory tools okay so we need to have a particular sam tools and these sam tools should be approved by ibm to get the benefit of sub capacity licensing and and the container licensing now we are going to speak about the sub capacity tools which are approved by ibm so those are your ilmt slash big fix flexera service now sam pro now ilmt is ibm own tool ilmt comes with a free of cost they don't uh, customer who are using ibm software can download this ilmt without uh, at a single dollar uh, purchase and this sits on top of the big fix platform and that big fix agents will be installed on all the servers where the sub capacity products are there basically the products which are measured by pvu or vpc okay and then you will have the licensing uh, done on this ilmt the second solution is flexera this is not ibm own product this is a separate company and flexera was added as an ibm approved tool a couple of years back and now a customer if he or they are using a flexera tool they can submit ibm this reports instead of an ilmt report for the sub capacity benefits no additional amendments or addendums are required to your existing ibm contract you can do this with the flexera flexera is a one stop platform for ibm and also the non ibm publishers this can work with many many publishers it is a complete sam tool ilmt is limited to ibm only okay and since the customer since the flexera has been approved uh, by ibm as a sub capacity eligible tool they have released one particular version called as flexera one with ibm observability this is exclusive for an ibm uh, customer to maintain their sub capacity this is cost benefit uh, beneficial it's not a full full fledged solution it limits the software scans or anything only for an ibm if customer only wants to use the flexera for ibm compliance and ibm sub capacity then there is service now sam pro this is again a sub capacity eligible tool with uh, certain terms there are in normal service now sam pro you need to have ilmt connectors to feed the data to the sam pro and then sam pro reports can be pulled and submitted to ibm for sub capacity however angle point has developed the api connectors for the sam pro and this the dependency on the ilmt connectors are no longer needed so what we can do now is if you have a sam pro service now sam pro available with you without having an ilmt installation we can work with the existing sam pro agents and we can integrate our i our angle point application and we can use the same scans software catalogs coming from sam pro to identify and submit a sub capacity reporting which is a great breakdown and we are the only software asset management team or uh, the we are the only isp submitter who can perform this at the moment and this is how the tool works okay all right going to the next slide all right now 
we spoke about the complexities of the the IBM licensing and the tools which we can use uh, use with the uh, IBM licensing or subcapacity licensing. What is the better part of IBM audits, right? Uh, whenever a customer being audited from the IBM, they always ask for two years worth of two years worth of backdated reports. So what that means is basically if at all any given point of time in the in the last two years, if there is any spike in the in the deployment without anyone's knowledge or it was done in a mistake or it was done purposefully, it will be recorded in those SAM tools and or the ILMT, which is mandated from IBM for you to have, and it will be read and it will be pulled up. And IBM will put a penalty on a customer for using that particular software at the peak usage. Right. Now that's again one other uh, one other problem is the efforts and the, the time taken by the auditors to complete this audit activity and the the difference what they will so the difference the SAM teams and and the auditor team which will happen the multiple discussions and so on and so forth so it has always been a bitter experience for all the customers who have gone through an IBM audit and IBM has come back with a SAM program so they are now coming up with an IASP program. This is IBM Authorized Service Partner Program. This program allows you to get three benefits. So one is the commercial benefit. When in case, when you, okay, so let me take a step back. So once you register yourself as an IASP provider or IASP customer, so you will be providing a quarterly report to IBM and through this, unless and until you are on that period of the IASP, you will not be audited by IBM. So that means it's a forward looking program. So whatever has done in the past, whether there has been a migration activity, whether there has been an increase in the course that will not be considered only from a day forward. So just giving an example, if you are joining the ISP program on the 1st of January, your reports or or your first baseline will start from the March or like because they'll give six months time period for, for the first baseline. So your report will start from March and the no data from 2023 or 2022 will be referred for the compliance. So any over deployments or any true requirement for a customer identified through this ISP program will be purchased or will be procured at the discounted price what uh, what you are basically getting what you're basically getting as your normal purchase rights so there is no penalty the licensing will not be applied at the list price and your usage and IBM visibility so this as this is an ongoing program, you will have a complete visibility of your IT estate. And we have, with our experiences on this uh, IBM or IASP programs, we have seen so many servers are being identified, which was not visible to the IT estate and the SAM teams of the customer SAM teams. And we have made sure that they have come to the visibility and any cost savings which can be done through this program, we have achieved and we have narrated to the customers. So any shortfalls will not be penalized and any underutilized products can be downturned and through this program. So there is no complexity of being audited or having the fear of the penalties and other stuff. Now, currently there are four service providers for IASP as recognized by IBM. So one is KPMG, Deloitte, EY, and us, the angle point. So what makes us the differentiator or what gives us the slight hedge from all the other competitors are what I have trying to describe in the last bottom three sections. So one is we are not an auditor or we are not a resellers. So we don't have any motive of giving benefit to the IBM or giving benefit to the any other publishers. So our only motive is to be truthful to the, the customers or the SAM, uh, the clients where we have uh, signed up for an ISP program. And we come up with the huge expertise of licensing, the depth of the license, what we have, what we have is great. And 
we are being selected by IBM to create the methodologies which we which you currently see in the IBM portal we, to develop those non-preview methodologies for IBM. And so we have been currently we have seen more than 350 IBM clients in in the in the in the in our uh, experiences and currently we run over 185 active IBM projects for our clients. So we do have in-house team who has an expertise on ILMT, BigFix, FNMS, ServiceNow, SAMPRO, who can cater the subcapacity licensing and, and we can optimize the tool and we have been managing the tool for all of the customers who have been using this. We do have uh, an in-house tool called Elevate Platform. This is our project management tool and basically this using this tool we can do three things for our customers so one is uh, to manage their project from starting to beginning uh, and then the supplier like basically we have a non preview developed templates for like for all the products where we can give an instructions on the elevator and you can view them and do it and also the intelligent automation. So when we speak of automation, we have an API connection with ILMT and ServiceNow where we don't need to be on client sharing or screen sharing sessions with, with client. We can pull an API, we can automate the bundling, we have automated the bundling, and we can do a push and pull of those software classifications to ILMT without being uh, in front of an ILMT. So which is great. Uh, in respect of time, I just want to highlight uh, one thing. Uh, so how do we join this ISP program? So what are the terms? So ISP program is actually an invite only program by IBM in the in, 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 in which has been going on. Uh, since we have approached IBM and we are doing this webinar, uh, IBM has agreed to have this year end promotion. So basically whoever, any client who is interested to join this IBM or know more of an IBM, instead of an invite only from IBM, we can approach IBM and with, uh, with your address and, and the company, and we can get you added into this ISP program instead of an invite only program. So if you need any further info on this IASP or how to join ISP, or if you want to discuss further on the benefits of IASP, feel free to reach out to the email addresses which have been given on the slide on this deck. Okay, now I will check for any questions on this because we are left with only four minutes. Um, Brandon, do you have the questions shortlisted? Yes, yes, I do. And thank you, Pratik. Thanks everyone for asking your questions. Sorry, um, uh, one, one last point. Yeah, so, no, so as you see on the screen, uh, this is our Gartner uh, review, or basically this is the NQ slide, what we call as Magic Quadrant. And we have been on the top of the leaderboard which you can see on the right hand top, the angle point. So we have been leaders on this leaderboard for the last five years now. And it is, this Gartner is, uh, does an assessment uh, once in a year based on multiple criteria of how, how the response from the client and how well we are doing in the market. So I just want to highlight like angle point has been in the top on the leaderboard for the, since the five years. Thank you. Awesome. Yeah, no, thank you. Yeah, and I'll add uh, Jill to answer your question. This is the managed services. Uh, magic quadrant. Um, so we, we've had a lot of questions come in. We only have a couple minutes left. We'll answer a few of them now. And then what we'll do is we'll take all these questions and we'll get answers to them. And we will share out those answers uh, in the email where we share the recording as well. So if we don't get to your question right now, we will get you your answers later. Uh, and again, all you can always reach out to us if you have specific questions. We can set up a call with Pratik or someone else on our IBM team. So feel free to reach out to us with any questions. Um, sure. But a few questions that came in, um, Pratik, one is, uh, does ILMT only work with Big Fix? ILMT uh, works with Big Fix and also there's Ansible, uh, 
which is another tool, but most of the time, 95% or 98% of time, we have seen ILMT getting data uh, feeded by the big fix agents. And I'm seeing also like if SAMPRO isn't configured, SAMPRO is a ServiceNow tool. ServiceNow tool actually needs ILMT to feed data for SAMPRO. The other way is, is, is not possible. So um, speaking of Sam Pro, does does the ILMT light integration work for Sam Pro or is it only the full ILMT? Uh, good question. So ILMT light pro uh, for that particular my is hosted by IBM. We have a better solution for it. So the screen which you're seeing right now, we don't need to integrate with ILMT anymore if you subscribe with angle point and elevate tool. So we do independent of ILMT, the service now will no longer need independent on ILMT. So we have an application built in and available in the marketplace. So if that is that will be added to your Sampro as an API connectors and as an application feed. So with that, we will do a catalog from our end and we don't need to rely on ILMT anymore. Awesome. Great. Um, let's see. Here's an are there any recent changes to IBM's licensing policies that are that people should be aware of? Uh, there have been a couple. So there have been an interesting topic going on on ineligible operating system uh, for subcapacity licensing. Uh, this has been biting some of the customers who are not on IASP, who are uh, going an audit. So the gust of it is basically if you are running a Windows 2012, I'm just taking one example, there are many of it. Uh, there is Windows 2012 is currently called as end of support by Microsoft. And what IBM is trying to do is they are promoting their customers to be on eligible software, eligible OS. And they are saying, if you are having a software running on this ineligible OS, they are no longer providing you subcapacity benefit. So you need to license on the full capacity. So that's, that's again, you have to buy the full pizza instead of one slice of pizza. So that has been biting all of our customers when they are not under IASP and we need to provide plan to IBM on how you are migrating the softwares and or how you're upgrading then OS in, in your uh, environment. That's one of the pretty new one. And the other, there was an old rule in IBM, basically, uh, so basically that if your if your customer size or the the uh, the, the PV consumption is less than thousand PVs or less than thousand employees, you don't need to have an ILMT. But that has been removed in the IBM systems now. You need to have the tool irrespective of how many PVs you own. Uh, again, I can talk more, but in the interest of time, there's one other point. Uh, in the passport advantage agreement, the latest version, there has been a clause that if an IBM can ask for a quarterly report, subcapacity reports from the customer, and customers should oblige to that within 90 days time period, uh, which is making more and more customer to uh, have an ILMT or a subcapacity tool on monitor their environment. There has been a push. Um, I see one other question of API app, uh, the angle point app for service now at Marketplace, does it come for free? That is come with a fee? Yes, it comes with the fee, but the fee will be included with the ISP services, what we uh, what we provide. Uh, so we have this ISP services, which works for all the three platforms. There will be a fee included for the service now application, which will be put in place. Awesome, awesome. thank you. Um, we're over on time. So we'll go ahead and, and end the webinar here. Uh, like I said, we have a lot of questions that came through. So just keep an eye out for an email from us. We will include, like I said, the recording and answers to your questions. Uh, we'll get those to you as best we can. If you would like to, you can reach out to us at info at anglepoint.com. Uh, you can go to our website. Uh, you can connect with Pratik here on LinkedIn. Um, and yeah, let us know if you're interested in joining ISP as we do have this promotion running and, and uh, some cool incentives there. So uh, otherwise, thank you so much for, for being here. Thanks, Pratik, again for presenting, and uh, we hope you have a great rest of your day. Thank you all. Thanks for your time.